Imagine stepping back to 1970. The air is buzzing with change and rebellion. The Beatles, the iconic band that defined a generation, just announced their breakup, sending shockwaves through the music world. Despite this, the spirit of the era doesn't falter. Instead, it's fueled by the pulsating rhythms of disco music, a new energetic sound dominating dance floors and radio waves. Welcome back to Beauty Through the Ages. Today we are hopping into our time machine to explore a fascinating era in beauty history, the 1970s. Also known for its disco, free spirit, and bold trends, the 1970s were a time of dramatic change in the beauty industry. Join me as we embark on a shopping journey to discover the iconic beauty products of the 1970s. As we dive into this exciting decade, Let's explore how these trends evolved, influenced by social changes, cultural movements, and the unstoppable spirit of the 1970s. To truly immerse ourselves in the beauty trends of the 1970s, we need to first soak in the essence of the era's pop culture. It was a time when music, movies, and celebrities weren't just entertainment. They were powerful forces shaping society's fashion and beauty ideals. The 1970s music scene was diverse and influential. From the soulful melodies of Motown to the rebellious chords of punk rock, each genre brought its unique flair to beauty styles. The rise of disco with its glitzy and glamorous ethos particularly revolutionized makeup and hair, encouraging boldness and sparkle. In cinema, the 70s were a golden era of both innovation and introspection. Films like Saturday Night Fever and The Godfather were not just box office hits. They were a cultural phenomenon that influenced fashion and beauty trends, making way for more dramatic and character-inspired looks. The impact of celebrities in setting beauty trends was profound. Icons like Farrah Fawcett and her feathered hair and natural makeup became a beauty standard for millions. Debbie Harry's edgy and punk-inspired makeup looks introduced a more daring aesthetic, while Diana Ross's glamorous and bold style redefined beauty norms, especially for women of color. These stars didn't just adorn magazine covers, they became the muses for everyday fashion and beauty enthusiasts. And the first stop in our shopping spree is the fragrance counter. As we step into our first destination on this beauty journey, we find ourselves en enveloped by the captivating aromas at the fragrance counter. The 1970s marked a distinctive shift in perfume preferences, mirroring the decade's overall ethos of freedom, exploration, and a connection with nature. In the 1970s, perfumes were an essential part of fashion and personal expression. This era saw a range of fragrances that varied from earthy and and musky to fresh and floral. Some of the most popular perfumes of the 1970s included Charlie by Revlon, and this one was launched in 1973, and Charlie was a game changer in the world of fragrance. It was marketed towards the modern working woman and is remembered for the distinctive floral adelaide scent. Let me know if you ever wore Charlie in the 70s. I know my mom said she had it and it was very popular. And another popular 70s perfume was YSL's Opium, and this one was released in 1977. Opium caused a stir with this exotic blend of spices, fruits, and resins. It was known for its rich, opulent scent and became a symbol of luxury. And another one is Musk Oil by Joven, and this musky fragrance gained immense popularity for its sensual and earthy aroma. Joven Musk Oil was a significant player in making musk a sought-after scent in the 70s. And when I think of the 70s, I do think of musky perfume for some reason, like darker, richer, warmer tones. And Estee Lauder Youth Dew was obviously originated in the 1950s, but Youth Dew remained extremely popular well into the 70s. I know you could get those long necklaces with Youth Dew um, solid perfume in them, and it has, a, again, a rich and spicy scent. And this was a favorite amongst people who also wanted the perfume oil, and they put it in their bathtubs as well. I don't really like Youth Dew. Maybe it works better like when you leave it on. I just found it very strong. And another one is Hall Halston by Halston, and this namesake fragrance of designer Halston became a hit in the mid-70s. It was known for its woody and floral fragrance, encapsulating the glamorous nightlife of the disco era. And when I think of the 70s for fashion too, I really think of Halston because it was just the brand of the 70s. And then we have Shalimar by Guerlain, and this one dates back to the 1920s, but again, it remained popular in the 70s because it had that darker scent to it with citrus notes, vanilla, 
It's a definitely timeless fragrance, but I could see why it would be popular in the 70s because the 1920s came back in style in the 70s because of the Great Gatsby movie. And these fragrances were not just popular for their scent, they also played a role in reflecting the culture and social trends of the 70s. Let me know if you were alive in the 70s if you wore any of these perfumes. As we dive deeper into our beauty time travel, we turn our attention to skincare, a facet of beauty that underwent a significant transformation in the 70s. Skincare in the 70s was not just about the occasional pampering, it became an integral part of daily beauty routines. Moisturizers and cleansers of the time were rich, creamy and focused on deep nourishment. The texture and formulation of these products were designed to provide a luxurious and sensorial experience, leaving the skin feeling soft, supple, and revitalized. And cold creams were also very popular in the 70s. Think of Pond's cold cream. In particular, it was renowned for its dual purpose formula, serving both as a makeup remover and a face cream. And Noxima skin cream was also super popular. And it's known for its deep eucalyptus scent and cooling sensation. And it was widely used for cleansing and refreshing the skin. And it's popular among those with oily, acne prone skin. Can also be used if you have a sunburn. And Avon Skin So Soft was another popular product, and this one was marketed as a bath oil, but it also became popular for its moisturizing properties, so you could rub it on when you get out of the bath. I mean, I would not put that on my face, though. And then there's Olay Beauty Fluid. This one's a classic. It's very lightweight. You can still buy this one today, as well as the Skin So Soft and Noxema and Ponds. And I love the Beauty Fluid because it has that like light pink, and the scent it just has a very 1950s feel to it. So it is a classic. And then I didn't know this actually, but Clinique's dramatically different moisturizing lotion was introduced in 1968 as part of Clinique's three-step skincare system. And this yellow moisturizer became a skincare icon and grew in popularity throughout the 70s. I actually used this one in high school. Mary Kay Cosmetics was very popular in the 70s and Mary Kay offered a wide variety of skincare products. I bought one of their deep moisturizers. It's like a pink cream. I really like it. It's a really thick moisturizer. Now let's turn our focus to one of the more dynamic aspects of 70s beauty, hair care. This decade was nothing short of revolutionary when it came to hairstyles and the products used to achieve them. The iconic feathered hairstyle popularized by celebrities like Farrah Fawcett demanded products that could prove volume and hold without weighing hair down. This need led to the development and popularity of volumizing shampoos and conditioners. These products were formulated to lift the hair from the roots, giving it a light, airy fullness that was essential for the feathered look. The effect was a soft yet structured style that became synonymous with the decade. Additionally, the 70s saw an exciting development in the world of hair color. The introduction of the first home hair dye kits marked a significant milestone in hair care. Can't imagine not having a home hair dye kit. So that would get so expensive if you always had to go to the salon. And they offered a wide range of colors from natural tones to more adventurous shades aligning with the era's flair for experimentation. People could now easily change their hair color in the comfort of their homes, encouraging more playful and daring hair colors. Clairol's shampoos and conditioners were popular. Clairol was well known for its hair color products, but the shampoos and conditioners were also very popular. They offered a wide range of products tailored to different needs, and Herbal Essences was a Clairol product. L'Oreal Paris Preference Hair Dye was popular, and this preference line, known for its long-lasting color and wide range of shades, was a favorite for at-home hair color in the 70s. Johnson & Johnson's Baby Shampoo gained popularity for its gentle formula and the shampoo was not just for babies but also adults and if you look at all the vintage ads they're really targeting females that are adults as well as babies so I thought that was interesting and then there's Alberto Balsam herbal shampoos and conditioners and these products were known for their pleasant scents and natural herbal ingredients so in the 70s they were really targeting that whole natural herbal aesthetic the vo5 hairstyling products Alberto VO5 offered a range of products including shampoos, conditioners, and hairstyling. And they don't sell this anymore in Canada, maybe just the like deep conditioning oil, but I have not seen any shampoos and conditioners. Maybe I'm wrong. I know people in my other videos said that you can get it in the States still. Rec Shampoo was another popular line in the 70s. 
and it's widely used in different advertisements and they were called Brett Girls. Frost and Tip by Clairol and this product was used for creating that frosted look. I remember using this in the 90s and this was popular in the 70s so you could highlight your hair at home. And I was also curious, I know people don't call it this now, but back in the day everyone called conditioner cream rinse. Does anyone still call it that? And Farrah Fawcett hair products and she had her own famous hairstyle obviously in the 70s but she also sold her own shampoos, conditioners and styling products. I, I even have one of her like blow dryer for styling your hair. Honestly, I've used it, but it's not very powerful compared to hair dryers nowadays. And then there's G, your hair smells terrific. I've always wanted to try this. I've seen it at the Vermont Country Store. This one apparently has a long lasting, unique fragrance. Let me know in the comments below if you've used this in the 70s. And these products were not just popular for their functionality, they also played a significant role in shaping the hair trends of the 1970s, catering to the diverse styles and preferences of the era. The 1970s was an era of bold and diverse makeup trends from the natural minimalist look to the glamorous disco style. Several makeup products became particularly popular during this time, reflecting the decade's wide range of beauty hairstyles. And here are some popular 1970s makeup products. The Max Factor Pan Stick, and this is a stick foundation that was popular for its creamy texture and full coverage, and you can still buy that one today. And then there's the Maybelline Great Lash Mascara, which is now so iconic, and this one was launched in 1971, and it became a favorite for its ability to create thick luscious lashes and it still has that distinctive pink and green packaging still recognized today and then covergirl was big on clean makeup and they launched this in the 60s and this product continued to gain popularity in the 70s for the natural look and feel which aligned the decades turn towards more subtle and natural makeup and then of course there's bon bell lip smackers and these were introduced in the early 70s and they were a hit especially on younger women and they have those fun colors and flavors. I definitely use these in high school. In the captivating world of the 70s makeup, lip trends played a crucial role reflecting the decade's diverse and evolving beauty standards. Lips were adorned with a variety of textures and colors from the lip glosses to the striking mattes. The early part of the decade was marked by the popularity of pale frosted lips and this is a reflection of the 60s moving into the early 70s and these were soft pinks to icy peaches and they're definitely more subtle look and brands like Revlon and Max Factor were at the forefront offering lipsticks in these light shimmery shades. And their frosted lipsticks, often with a slight iridescent finish, were a nod to the lingering influence of the 60s mod aesthetic. And as the decade progressed, lip trends shifted dramatically, mirroring the changing times. The emergence of bold reds and deep browns in the latter part of the 70s spoke to a growing confidence and assertiveness in fashion and beauty. And these rich statement-making shades were about empowerment and visibility. Brands like Estee Lauder and Clinique led the way with their range of luxurious, highly pigmented lipsticks. Popular reds of the time range from bright cherry reds to deeper, more burgundy hues. And these shades were often worn with a more natural face, allowing the lips to be the focal point. Deep browns, on the other hand, range from warm chocolate tones to cooler taupe shades. When I think of 70s lips, I definitely think of that darker, richer red tone. In our exploration of 70s beauty, we cannot overlook the significant stride made in nail fashion. And this decade marked a turning point where nails transformed from mere grooming to an essential element of style and self-expression. The 70s were instrumental in bringing nail art and color to the forefront of fashion adding an extra dimension to personal aesthetic. One of the most enduring contributions of the 70s to nail fashion is the French manicure. Contrary to its name, the French manicure was popularized in the United States during this era. It offered a look of understated elegance, characterized by a natural pale pink base and a crisp white tip. This style quickly gained popularity for its versatility and its ability to complement any outfit, making a timeless classic still cherished today. Alongside the subtlety of the French manicure, the 70s also embraced the bold and colorful in nail polishes. The decade saw an explosion of both vivid and pastel shades, reflecting the overall trend of self-expression and experimentation in beauty. Bright reds, deep blues, sunny yellows, and playful greens were just some of the choices available, allowing individuals to match their nails to their mood. 
In the vibrant tapestry of the 70s beauty culture, beauty magazines and advertisements were not just influential, they were instrumental in shaping the era's trends. Well, back then, you didn't have the internet or anything, so you really had to look at magazines. Beauty magazines of the time, such as Vogue, Cosmopolitan, and Harper's Bazaar, were more than just publications. They were style bibles for women across various age groups. I remember even in the 90s and early 2000s having to read magazines to get all of my ideas. And these magazines provided a window into the glamorous world of fashion and beauty, featuring cover stories and editorials with renowned models and celebrities. They offered a blend of high fashion imagery and practical advice, making them both aspirational and accessible to the readers. Advertisements in these magazines, as well on television, played a pivotal role in shaping beauty standards and trends. They were powerful tools used by beauty brands to create desire and demand for their products. Ad campaigns for the 70s were known for their creativity and flair, featuring catchy jingles and memorable taglines and striking visuals. I feel like vintage ads had more catchy taglines than they do now. So I even remember jingles from when I was a kid that I'll just never forget. Let me know in the comments below if there's any catchy 1970s jingles that you still can't get out of your head. And in the midst of the 70s, the backdrop of bold colors and dramatic eyes, there emerged a contrasting yet equally powerful trend, the natural beauty movement. And this movement marked a significant shift in the beauty industry, advocating for a more understated and authentic approach to cosmetics and personal care. Minimal makeup became the hallmark for this movement. The focus was on using lighter products that enhanced rather than mask one's appearance. So lighter makeup like tinted moisturizers, light lip glosses, subtle mascara, and so then basically this was the original version of the no makeup makeup look. So it was that barely there natural beauty. And this really laid the groundwork for a lot of the like natural wellness trends you see today. And I really do like that kind of natural dewy no makeup look. But then there's a contrast of the disco era. And as the 1970s progressed, the emergence of the disco era brought with it the unmistakable and transformative influence of the beauty and fashion landscape and it was characterized by the vibrant music, dance culture, and flamboyant fashion. This was like a contrast to the no makeup natural look, and it was all filled with glitz and glamour, like glittery eyeshadow, and just more fun makeup. But I feel like maybe people wore that at night, but not so much in the day. So maybe in the day they did the no makeup natural look, and if they were actually going out to the disco, then they would do the more intense glittery look that's more theatrical. And eyeliners were used to create dramatic shapes, extending well beyond the natural line. And when I think of the disco era, I really think of like Cher back in the day in the 1970s. I really loved her look. And hairstyles during the disco era were more flamboyant. Volume was key and the hairstyles became bigger and more elaborate. And the use of hair products, including mousses and gels and hairsprays increased the essential for creating these voluminous styles. In the vibrant beauty scene of the 1970s, celebrities wielded an immense influence, often serving as the muses and trendsetters of the era's most iconic looks. Their impact on fashion and beauty was profound. Stars like Bianca Jagger and Liza Minnelli not only captivated audiences with their performances, but also inspiring everyday beauty routines with their distinctive styles. Bianca Jagger, with her glamorous and sophisticated persona, became a symbol of the chic and daring fashion of the 1970s. Her makeup choices, often characterized by bold lips and defined eyes, resonated with the era's preference for statement-making looks. Her ability to blend elegance with a touch of the avant-garde made her a style icon, influencing not just high fashion, but also the everyday makeup choices of, that women sought to emulate. And then we have Eliza Minnelli, and she was known for her charismatic, dynamic performances, but she also left a significant mark when it came to 1970s beauty trends with her dramatic eye makeup featuring bold eyeliner and dramatic lashes. And Minnelli's style was a perfect embodiment of the 70s flair for theatrical and expressive makeup. And these are just a few of the many style icons of the 1970s. Do you have a favorite style icon that you look at when you think of the 1970s? I really think of Farrah Fawcett when I think of the 1970s because she's just so iconic. But let me know in the comments below, do you have a favorite look from the 70s? It's really becoming one of my favorite decades. I don't know, when I think back to the 70s, I feel like it would have been a nice time to be alive. I don't 
don't know. It just feels like an interesting decade. And if I could travel back there for a week, I feel like I would enjoy myself. Let me know in the comments below if you could go back in time to any decade, which one would you go to and why? All right, don't forget to check out some of my other vintage videos.